Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Wyoming Blessed with Tish and if you haven't done so already, I want you to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell that is right next to it over here so that you'll be notified when a video is uploaded and of course hit that thumbs up, hit the like button. Let's get these videos out more. The more we get out, the more views we get, the more uh, ads that are watched, the more giveaways we do, of course. So, y'all, this is a seafood boil mix. So, there's some of the Red Atlantic crab. There's some huge, gigantic freshwater prawns. There is some crawfish, eggs, corn, Brussels sprouts. And over here, we got some lettuce from Coda's Hydroponic Garden. Um, and to drink... This is in the sauce, y'all, because this is a mix of Bee Loves um, Smackalicious and Bee Loves Garlic. And I used this in it today, y'all. I thought, let's try that. So I have that left. And then I also have Fiji Apple to go in my glass. Mm. Get some of that ASMR action in there. Some people like it, some people don't. This is my Tisch glass that also has um, the ribbons on it for epilepsy and brain tumor awareness. So we're going to set that to the side there. I have my blade over here for my shells. I have paper, I have hand wipes, I have everything. So my sauce has garlic, uh, roasted bell pepper, onion, chopped onion, and I'm not going to lie y'all, you use dried chopped onion and you put it in the sauce and it goes down, and pickled sweet garlic, regular garlic, a little bit of butter, not a lot, um, and then the seasoning mix, and two times spicy sauce because I like a kick. And normally I do broccoli, but I really love Brussels sprouts too, y'all. So if y'all ain't noticed, do you see this different background? We do. It's change. And our video today is going to be about change. So we're going to have a little discussion, but first we're going to eat. That's what, Oh, These freshwater prawns are sharp. It's going to be a messy video. Mm. So, <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's got a kick, y'all. Mm. I'm more sparkly today. See, we're all sparkly here, sparkly on the eyes. We're sparkly. This one's different, y'all. I will say that. It's great in the sauce. So y'all remember our crawdads. I have crawdads or crawfish, as y'all, a lot of y'all call it, um, from Wyoming that we get out of the one, one of the ponds here. So they're gigantic. And I have a bunch of claws. get one of these big old prawns out of the way. When I say big, I mean big, y'all. <laughs> yep. So for TikTok and Instagram, come over here and watch this. We have a kind of like a seafood boil with a whole bunch of garlic and whatnot. Huge freshwater prawn, which is what I got right here. We have a change. This whole video 
is about change in different ways. Y'all want to hear this one. So come over. Because I have something I'm going to tell y'all. It's going to change life and the way that you look at it. it really is because it did for me. So anyways, let's get into this big old thing here. And it is a big old thing, y'all. It's huge. Garlic is great for you. Don't let it go to waste. I boiled these in crab boil. <clears throat> oh, it's a car. I was like, is somebody in my yard? Wouldn't surprise me around this neighborhood, y'all. Mm. See, the sauce is like down in there though. And I can't reach it. So we're gonna move some. <laughs> where do I, I was like, where'd I put my piece though? This is gonna be a longer video. A lot of finger licking. I'm gonna get this out of the way. So. I'm going to put a picture in the community tab of Coda's Hydrophonic Garden. Y'all, this thing's going nuts. He had a humongous potato plant. And we got up one morning this week and something must have ate it. Which is weird because we don't have bugs right now normally. So I'm not sure... Y'all, no, I don't really care for this crab. This is the one that I got from Walmart. And I would not get it again. It is way too much work for what little bit you get. Like, it's worse than blue crab. I love it blue crab though the flavor is outstanding but this see now you got the skin like I don't know membrane whatever the wind's blown and you'll probably hear Carlos snoring he just got off graveyards y'all so he thought I'm tired and I ain't about to wake him up just because I'm doing a video. And I set some of that out there. You all see, we don't have the wood cutting board anymore either. It is now garnet, granite. I don't know why I was gonna say garnet. Get my way. Mm. super tender lettuce. <sighs> There's a bunch of meat in here still. We'll, we'll do that off camera. <laughs> Get one of these eggs. Look, y'all. Mm. They're not like soft boiled, but they're not hard boiled either. Mm. Dropping onion and garlic everywhere. I wish I had a spoon. Mm. I do. I do. I usually keep that kind of stuff back here anyways. Just in case. 
and it's pretty and sparkly. Just like me. Just kidding. But I want some of that broth juice. Mmm. Mmm. I brought lots of napkins. And now they are paper. I know some of you don't like the sound that comes through. You all know they you ain't really cracking those heads and sucking them out too much. They are too hard. Come on. See, they have huge bodies, but they really don't have gigantic tails. They do have huge bodies. But then still it's still typical tail meat mm. my hands are clean so I want to hear it I want to hear nothing about calories or anything like that because I am well within my macros so I'm gonna talk about change y'all A weight loss journey is not just about physical change at all. Probably the majority of it isn't really. I have been changing a lot over the last year. And some people are going to handle that. Some are not. Some are going to take some time to get used to. They're going to need time. Because it is change, y'all. And really, we all evolve throughout life. Uh, you will outgrow relationships, whether that be friendships, marriage, family relationships. Even like you're gonna outgrow things because you're changing. So, <clears throat> you know, my whole entire life I have spent trying to make everybody around me happy, trying to do everything I could to make everybody around me happy. Of course, in doing that, I never tried to make myself happy. I didn't have time. You know, and my aunt told me, she's like, you know, you're going to hit a certain age where you're done doing that. Where you realize that you have to take care of yourself before you take care of others. And I was always like, no. You know. I've been with my husband for 10 years. The entire time I've been with him, it's always been about what made him happy. Big mistake. I know you, some of you are going to be like, what? Trust me. Not a big mistake far as... You know, I don't know how to put it, but either way, some people are going to view your change <clears throat> as being fake. It's not, they're just not used to the new you. And really, honestly, some could say the way that I was being before was in a sense fake. Because I was always doing whatever made everybody else happy. Is that being true to myself? No. So in a way, that's 
that's being fake. You know, in all honesty. So, you know. And also, me, you guys are going to be like, we're going to come after you for how many times you say, you know. You know. <laughs> but, so, you know. See, there we go again. I'm 36. Never done it. A day in my life. I've had to be an adult since I can remember. I love my parents, but they had issues. Whether it was addiction issues, mental issues, whatever. And they still fight with that. But I can't fix that for them. I tried so hard my whole life. They have to do it for themselves. Um, and within themselves. You know. So. It, it's been hard. I know there are relationships that won't make it through this. And ones that haven't already. Um. Uh, I've always been a very straightforward person. I tell you what I think, when I think it, and how I feel. That's who I am. I don't sugarcoat anything for anybody. Nobody. Uh, I don't even sugarcoat stuff for Koda. Reality is reality. Some people don't like that. At the end of the day, though, that can be my problem, you know? But I remember being a little girl and any time, like when we were camping and stuff, any time anybody would get hurt, I would run and try and fix it. That is a depiction of my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. Literally. But in that meantime, nobody was taking care of me. Let me tell you something. My aunt said something to me the other night. <clears throat> My aunt is a former addict, y'all. Um has went through hell and back to be clean and sober for many, many years. Uh, we're talking many years. I have an amazing relationship with her. I have my entire life, even when she was going through her addiction. Um, she was always my everything. Hmm. But, you know, she said something that struck a chord. She said, there's a difference between being support for someone and being their savior. And I, it took a minute and she explained it to me. And you all thought I looked at life like this <sighs> would have saved me a whole lot of heartache and a whole lot of exhaustion. You all see me, I'm often exhausted. She said, when you support somebody, you're there for them, but you're not the everything. You're not trying to fix everything. You're not trying to save everything. That's up to them. She said, when you're their savior, you feel like you have to fix everything. You have to save everything. You have to do everything for them and for them to be happy. She said, let me tell you something I've learned in my journey of sobriety. She said, when you're a savior, people will drain you dry. Let that set in. People will drain you dry. She said, whether it's family, it's friends, they'll drain you dry if you allow them to. Y'all? 
For 36 years of my life, I have allowed people to drain me dry. And I'm at the point where I have to set boundaries with people. I've had to do it with my father. I've had to do it with my mother. And and I have had to do it with friends. And y'all, the reaction to that, not even devastating. It's just gut-wrenching. The reaction to setting boundaries of not allowing people to drain me dry anymore. I can't deal with my demons and my trauma. Because y'all, I had a traumatic childhood. And I need to deal with those. And move forward. And better myself and become a better person. But I can't do that trying to save everybody else. I can't do that when I leave no battery juice for me. And a lot of this is mentally. I have allowed people to use me and abuse me in more mental ways than any person should ever allow. It does make me emotional because y'all 36 years of my life, um, my whole life, I've allowed this. We all have trauma. Let's be real. Every single one of us. I've never met a person that doesn't have some form of trauma, whether it's from their childhood or their adulthood or whatnot. We all have it. I do not believe that I'm above anyone because of that, but I have to fix my stuff. I have to deal with my stuff before I can ever be of any assistance or any help or healthy for other people. And I cannot allow people to drain me dry. like. They've done it my whole life. And I've had to set boundaries, like I said. Some of those with my husband. With friends, with family, like I said. My father, my mother. I've had to set boundaries. Are they liking it? No. Carlos is doing pretty well with it. We've been together 10 years, y'all. And really, honestly, he's just now learning and seeing the true traumas that I've went through. No trauma, but, you know. What would you call them? Um, hurdles. I mean, it was things that traumatized me. He's starting to see him. My husband didn't have a great growing up. He grew up very, very much so in poverty, y'all. And so he works very hard to make sure that that never happens for us. You know. And we do have a difference in he wants a baby. I don't. So that's something he's got to work through. You know. Simple fact of the matter is, number one, I'm too old for that. I am, y'all. I'm 36. I've got a 14-year-old kid. Who I've been to hell and back with. I'm too tired for another kid. And I know what it takes to raise a baby. He doesn't necessarily. But you know. That's our differences. And in marriage. 
you're going to have those. You either learn to work through them or you don't. You know? I've never sugarcoated that. It's always been known that I didn't. So, you know. He did adopt Coda. Coda is his son. There's a difference, y'all. Whether anybody wants to admit it or not, there is. But, baby ain't for me. <laughs> it ain't for me. Mentally, physically, emotionally, ain't for me. <laughs> no, thank you. There are a lot. Oh, good lord, there are a lot. Wouldn't trade mine for the world, but I'm happy with one. Oh, excuse me. I don't ever do that. That's disgusting. Ugh. I'm so sorry. That one just come out. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting full. I'm going to eat this last egg and maybe some corn. But... So this is, I don't know if any of y'all have ever went through this yourself or are, or new to, but I do know there's a whole lot of people in this world and a whole lot of my supporters probably the needed to hear that. There is a difference of being support and being a savior. Whew. You know. Life is short. Be kind to one another. But don't forget to be kind to yourself too. Don't forget to take care of yourself. We got some more COVID going on in the family too, so. Mm. Stresses me out, you know. Don't ask me how. You know, I'm pretty sure we probably had it in this house, just didn't realize it. You know, I have a lot of tummy problems, whatnot. So I could have and not even realized that that's what I had. Same with Quota. So, it's hard to say. So 2022 for me is about change. Continuing my journey of change. But learning how to stop being a savior for everybody be support and also learning that it's okay to love myself that it's okay to take care of myself it doesn't mean that I don't love them and I don't care and that's the other thing is I need people to understand I still love them I still care about them I just gotta take care of me for once and also you know, 2022 is about setting boundaries and I am not a full tank of gas or a gas pump that I can put gas into everybody and then have none left for me. So the boundaries, and I'm not good at setting boundaries. I am bad at it. I'm so bad at it, you know. I've always been the fixer. That's the way to put it. I've always been the fixer. 2022 is about being, not being the fixer for everybody. I'm being the fixer for myself. Because Koda needs to know what it is to have good mental health, to be stable in life, and to love yourself. I need that kid to learn to love himself. But I can sit there and preach to him to love himself when I don't do it for myself. We are these children's models. They're role models. 
and I want to be the best role model I can be for my child. Don't come after me and tell me, well, then you should lose weight because it's unhealthy, y'all. Don't judge a book by its cover. I can do more than probably 95, 96% of big people. And everything, my blood work, everything is fantastic. I just happen to be fat. It happens. And I'm working on that. And I'll continue to work on that. And it's going to continue to be a battle. Uh, for anybody that's a food addict, it'll always be an uphill battle. You just have to learn to climb in a wiser way. And then a slower pace. It is in a race. So if I don't lose weight one week, it's okay. I have next week. Hopefully. God granted. <laughs> Anyways, there's a whole lot of talking and not a whole lot of eating because y'all, I'm full. Even though I didn't really, well, I mean, I ate three eggs. That's really what I wanted, y'all, was the eggs. <laughs> I should have just done one of those egg boils. I wanted soft boiled eggs, but y'all even go into culinary school. I am horrible at doing boiled eggs, especially peeling them. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I want to thank you for giving me all your love, your support, and being there with me on this journey. And I will see you guys back here next week. And as always, stay warm and stay blessed. Bye, y'all.